everyone. Welcome to Spirit Coffee Talk. Myself, Lisa, uh, joined by my lovely ladies, Jeanette and Elise. We are the um, medium and channelers from Avalon Spirit, and we come every week to just talk about everything spirit. And so we're here uh, bright and early on a Friday morning, and it's so nice to see your lovely faces. It's very refreshing to come in and have this coffee time with you ladies. So how are we feeling this morning? I think our clothing speaks to that. <laughs> I was just going to say that too. Everything right. in between. Yeah. From darkness yeah. to light. Yeah. <laughs> totally. I think that's, uh, that's very accurate. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I have definitely been feeling a whole range of emotions and experiences this week. Even considering everything going on in Russia and Ukraine. Um, it feels like and I know I've talked to many people about this, it feels like, you know, we're just starting to step out of a pandemic that just rocked everyone. We had uh, different rebellions going on and then Black Lives Matter and then First Nations stuff that was happening in the summer and uh, floods and fires and all of this. And now it's like another thing is piled on top. And so that's on a world collective level. It's like piling and piling and piling and piling. But I also find that that seems to be echoing for a lot of people also in their personal experience. So they're having personal pilings of things on top where they're just like, I can't. It's also happening in the collective. And so that's a lot. And I want to say that's a lot, even though we know and we have said many times over, like there's a hundred years worth of growth happening in four years and we're in the middle. Right, so it's going to be a lot, and even that's, if we that's, know, not, that's not just collective. Like, think about the lessons that we're learning on an individual basis, and we can see it by the timeline crosses that we have to do it individually as well. Yeah. Well, so like on a on a soul level, on a growth soul level, on purposeful living, and like meaningful existence here on Earth right now, we can't go through those four years of a hundred years of of growth without experiencing it individually too on a soul level so it's like life lesson life lesson life lesson <laughs> like, <laughs> karmic outplay like learning like so we're experiencing it on a human level too right in, in our existence within the collective that's tower card tower card tower card <laughs> and i think it's important to say that even if we know that right like we've talked about it those watching if you guys have watched our show several times you know about it it still doesn't take away from the fact that it's hard, mm. right? Like just because you know, it doesn't make the the experiencing, uh, it doesn't mean it has to be easy because well, you know, you know this. It's like there's still emotions connected to all the parts. We look at it in the collective and it's emotional and we look at our own individual piling of things or reactions and that's emotional. And like Elise, you always say, you have to feel the emotions we can't just bypass them we have to feel them and yeah. when we feel them it doesn't mean it's easy to feel them i think that's really important to say right now like it's okay to feel at your max or like i can't take anymore i can't look out in the world and take anymore i can't have more whatever is going on in our personal lives it's okay to feel at that max point right now mm -hmm. yeah and yeah Oh, go ahead, Lily. No, you. Um, I was just going to say, you know, I think too, we have to be, whether we're looking at everything going on in the world from a spiritual lens, there's so much change happening. We are being put through growth. Um, you can't grow when you're comfortable, right? Like that just doesn't happen. When we're comfortable, we like to stay put. So it's a necessary part of the process. And I don't mean to say war is necessary part of the pro like, or any sort of, you know, injustice to people, but collectively when we're looking at thing after thing, after thing happening, it's forcing us to reevaluate, um, you know, life and how we show up. And I think that we also have to understand that we are in a time now where you are so exposed to information constantly, whether it's, COVID, whether it's, you know, protests, whether it's um, the wars and, and war is not just Ukraine, but that have been happening around the world for years, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're way more um, exposed and open to these things, which in some ways is a blessing because it allows you to understand, it allows you to learn, it allows you to, if you choose, um, you know, 
grow and evolve and get information in a different way but that can also be a lot for our nervous system like we're not we're not set up as a as a system to be constantly inundated with traumatic things and yeah. whether that's you're experiencing the traumatic things right if you're living in a place right now that's really experiencing a lot of trauma or you know you've experienced a lot of trauma with covid or you're just view it like maybe you've personally been a little bit removed from the things happening you're still taking it in and so what everybody is experiencing these different levels of traumatic experiences to a degree and like that has an impact on us and so we have to really be aware of the fact that like a little bit of meditation a day or moving your body like that's not just going to make it better and i think sometimes you know in the effort to say how can we move through things we we give tangible things not we specifically but just everybody failing to remember that like sometimes it's just too much and sometimes all we can do is like hold ourselves through it until we get through it mm -hmm. and if that means like curling up in a ball in bed and like watching shows and crying and you know whatever cuddling with your pets or your loved ones and like that's what it is and do that mm -hmm. and and listening feeling the feelings but also listening to what your body needs and what you need and your nervous system needs to support yourself because like this is a marathon it's not a sprint even though it's 100 years and four years that feels sprintish but you know on our 3d planet of linear time four years of shit show is not is not a sprint it's a marathon that's true you know what i found sort of helpful um and maybe it's just temporarily helpful like maybe it's helpful in an acute moment but i used to do this with pain and it's something i taught my kids so like say you you stub your toe really hard and your toe hurts when you sit and focus on the fact that it's hurting it hurts more right like it gets bigger but when you can somewhat detach and be like okay brain yes i'm aware my toe hurts thank you let's stop sending the pain signal i know it's hurt i will take care of it let's cut that signal off it kind of like decreases the amount that you experience because you consciously get in there and reroute it because really the pain is like problem 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 right and so when we consciously get in there we kind of switch part of it off now what i found i did yesterday because i found yesterday really overwhelming there was a couple times where i just stopped and i was like okay this is what overwhelm feels like and I kind of did that same thing instead of just being like, ah, ah, I gotta do this and this and this, and this is happening, this is happening and staying up here. I was like, okay, wait a minute. This is what overwhelm feels like. Recognize the sensation of overwhelm. Okay, brain, you got it. Now, can we take it down a notch? And it's like, I could do sort of that same thing that I did a little bit with pain. And I mean, it didn't, didn't mean that the pain just went away and I was like, oh, nothing, I don't feel it. But the panic that then comes or that feeling of panic or um, whatever that is for you gets taken out of the equation because then you're becoming consciously aware of how you're feeling in that moment. And I'm not saying that's going to work for everybody or that works in every moment. There's some moments where it's just too extreme, but I found that kind of helpful. And it was kind of just like finding a way to detach just a touch. And I remember I was taught that uh, when I was 17 and dealing with anxiety and they said when the anxiety attack comes on count bricks count dots count flowers count panels on the wall do something that distracts that signal so you can get in there and consciously then choose what you're going to do about it mm -hmm. and that's always stuck with me and so I thought that was interesting because I just kind of wanted to say like even in the feelings of overwhelm overwhelm we can witness it and then get some space to kind of try and choose what to do the psychology world will say like, name it to tame it. So by actually looking at it and saying like, I am feeling overwhelmed right now. And the the next step of that is detaching from the story of it because so often you'll hear like, oh, 90 seconds and emotion will pass. And then you're practicing that and you're like, uh, that's not true. <laughs> I felt overwhelmed all day or anxiety all day. But if you can actually watch your brain and disconnect from the story of like, hi, I'm feeling so overwhelmed. And da, 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 da. That's what's perpetuating it. The brain telling the story about the feeling, not the feeling itself. So if you're able to pause in a moment and say, I'm feeling really overwhelmed right now. Okay. What does that feel like in my body? It feels like tightness in my chest. It feels like this, like you're naming the things, the feelings, maybe you see colors with it. Maybe there's, you know, other words that come up. 
typically if you can stay with it and like really just look it in the face, it will move and shift. Um, but sometimes that's not the case. And so like you were saying too, if you can, you know, if, if you can't get a hold of your brain, cause it's not an easy thing to do. And especially like we were saying, when you're inundated constantly with things, it's like, that can be a hard train to catch. So like you were saying, just holding space and, and telling your body, like in this moment, I am safe. People, you know, experiencing a war torn country don't feel safe. That's not going to work for them. <laughs> this is for those of us that are, you know, safe. It's the, it's the fear and the overwhelm of the information and the things that are just bit by bit by bit kind of taking their its toll on us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Lise? I'm actually just like kind of embodying all the words energetically from you guys because it's really beautiful messages and I need to hear it right now too. And so I feel that today I'm really um, absorbing some of the light uh, for energy for myself from you from you too. So I appreciate that. Um, I yeah, just not. I feel like there's a lot of us that are like, what can I do right now? Like I feel so helpless. I feel so helpless because like, what is there to do? And you know, I think right now, especially like you were saying, it's like we have to kind of come back to like point zero. And so when you look at the ripple effect of anything, it's got to stem from the existence of the point zero, the, 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 you know, the centerpiece of the ripple, which is, you know, the rock, the whatever that causes a ripple. And that's us, right? The, the ripple effect that is caused by anything comes from like source of the individual. So if we're looking at our own ripple effect of how we want to create change or how we want to be involved or how we just want to get through, go to like the center poise point of the ripple and don't look at the collective for your answers. Don't look way outside of the ripple for your answers. Look at like point A. And so that can look like, just like you said, coming in and resting. Um, it can just be like before, you know, the step before you go out and help somebody else is coming into that center point to be able to find your, your source of peace. And then know that from that point is what causes the ripple. Because if we're going out into the collective without coming into our centerpiece, then that looks like, what does your ripple look like? Does it look like a ripple effect of fear? Does it look like a ripple effect of anger? Or, um, you know, whatever it might be. Like, what do you want the ripples to stem from? So really, it's like, at this point, when there's so much ripples out there, right? And you want to see, how do I want to be involved in the collective? How do I want it to permeate out of my existence? Go back into your centerpiece of the ripple, kind of the, the point zero, and start from scratch. Like, and that's like rest, recovery, uh, self-love, just stopping you know, and starting from square one from your own personal, you know what I mean? Do you mm -hmm. get the visual? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a, um, I have a message coming through of my, from my guides. Um, I knew that was going to happen. Yeah. And so, yeah. Okay. So what they're talking about, this is from the three guides of light. Um, cause I could kind of hear them talking in the background while you were talking mm. and they were saying they're grateful. We're speaking on the emotional aspect and they said they would like to speak on the collective, but more so the cosmic collective aspect, the like higher beings, the God source creator universe aspect of, uh, a question many people in humanity would ask is like, why would God let this happen? Why would the universe allow this to happen or allow these things to happen all the things we've been seeing why would the universe allow these things to happen and it leads to they're showing me how that leads to the question of like destiny so why can't then if this is happening why can't the spirit world tell us what's going to happen why can't they say what the answer is or fix it and so they're saying as much as we are involved in um actually hold on i'm just going to channel it because I'm getting too much in the way. So just hold on one sec. That'll be easier.
We are the three guides of light and we appreciate the opportunity to be able to come through. We want you all to remember that this year is a number six year, number six representing love. Love is at the forefront of our actions with humanity. We have stepped in in as many ways as we can and we continue to. And when we say we, we are talking about the whole cosmic collective. You know them as the Galactic Federation or the Earth Alliance. And there are many other names that many people call us as the collective. Our greatest gift to you is love and guidance. Please remember that much of the things that occur on your planet though are also a result of free will. Free will is the birthright of human beings on this planet. And it is something that us in the higher realms honor always. We will step in when needed to certain degrees, to the degree in which your consciousness allows us to be present. That allowance is increasing continually as you all awaken and ascend. This is a good thing. This is why we stress that holding your frequency high is so important at this time. Because of the higher the higher the frequency you can hold the more we can help sustain your light as well if you drop down into the darkness it is harder for us to reach you we are all always connected but the higher you vibrate the more we can feed that continual flow of source energy into you please remember that we are continually monitoring and working with the situations on your planet moment by moment. There is never a point in which we turn our backs on you as a collective. We will continue to do the things we can and step in where we can. Oftentimes this occurs in the fourth dimension. Many of you don't see us. However, there are some that can. And it is in these dimensions that we can help affect some of the things that occur on your planet. Please know that we are standing very close by to step in at any point that we can to help change the trajectory. We do want to assure you that at this point the trajectory of human consciousness is still moving upward. It is important to reiterate that these 100 years worth of change happening in four years is very intense for all of you on the planet right now. This is not an easy feat, and we send you so much love and gratitude for your willingness to be here at this time. Embodiment at this time is a challenge, and it is taking a toll on your physical bodies as well. Many of you are feeling illness, fatigue in ways you never have before. You have just been slowly stepping out of a pandemic on your planet and now moving into more strife. We recognize this, and we bring you support. Again, hold your frequency as high as you can and we can continue to feed you with source energy. The way in which you hold your frequency is up to you, but it is by consciously choosing to do the things that bring you peace, that help you release stuck emotions, and help you raise your joy even in simple moments. I feel like that um, is always like brought to with such love frequency. Like you can just feel the love from that, like the frequency of love, which is really refreshing. Mm -hmm. um, but it, you know, it really does. It does require trust. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what? That's funny you say that because a card I pulled earlier in the week for myself was this one and it says trust in the unknown. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? But it's so true. The trust in in that unknown and that perspective. It's a hard one, right? It's hard. We can, when things are really good, 
we can say, yeah, we trust, we this, yes, yes, yes. But when things are bad or really bad, that's when it takes like real grit to try and hang on to faith. And I guess that's what faith is all about. Totally. Right? Faith, trust. Those are my words that came up. I had a beautiful session with Kevin this week. And those are the, the words that came up like over and over. Mm -hmm. Just love, faith, and trust. Love, mm -hmm. faith, and trust. And it's like, when you do that and then it doesn't work out to the way that you anticipated and then it actually creates like you're having to have like more you're like hold on a sec so like i did that i did the faith and the trust thing and i'm still at this stage so like more mm -hmm. oh and surrender that was the other one surrender mm -hmm. and i'm like that's such a word that you're like just surrender. And when you're helping others, it's like surrender to that. But it's like one of my most triggering words, probably because I need to do it. Right? Mm -hmm. Faith, trust, and surrender. Like that is such a big thing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Especially definitely. when you think that what you want should have happened already a long time ago. I know. And it hasn't. So obviously the key words to it, right? Yeah. 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 Well, any thoughts, Elise? Yeah, I was just going to say I love that they spoke to part of the path to joy and peace um, is through feeling and moving stuck emotions and, you know, being with the things that are coming up for you. Because I think sometimes we're afraid, like, oh, if I go into it, I will stay stuck. I will get stuck there. I won't be able to get out of the feeling. And while we do have to watch that, because that can certainly happen for some of us, right? We kind of start to go in there and then we wallow in these, these feelings. Um, I think we also like, just as a, as a world need to start edging towards doing that in a, in a safe way. And that the, the path through is through, <laughs> like you have to, we have to go through in order to tap into those other things, whether it's joy, mm -hmm. peace, understandings, growth, all of those things, all of the stuff we've talked about today, it's to get through it, you have to go through it. Um, mm -hmm. And and that's hard. And it's like you were saying, Lisa, it's like, and then sometimes we have ideas about how it's going to look and then we need to trust and faith and surrender and all these words that we hear so often. And um, I was having a conversation the other day and I just said, you know, I'm, I, I have to choose those things because what else do you do? Right? Like, and, and trusting and having faith and surrounding doesn't mean sitting back and doing nothing, right? It doesn't mean just being like, well, well, we'll see what happens, you know, meh. We still take action. We still care for ourselves. We still, you know, take steps forward. Um, but it's from the perspective of like, I'm just, I, I have to hope for the best because being stuck in the fear of it, regardless of what the outcome is, is only going to impact getting to the outcome, right? So can mm -hmm. I choose to move towards the outcome of any sort of situation from a place of trusting and, and moving, you know, emotions and getting to know myself through it and all of these things, or do I want to just like panic and, and push back and, and resist it and, you know, dig in my heels the whole way, regardless, we're getting to the end result. So mm -hmm. how do you want to move there and, and being gentle with yourself as you edge towards doing that? Cause it's certainly not a easy or perfect process. Yeah. Good point. Well, just have patience and love for yourself mostly in this, like even just have love and patience for yourself when you're feeling trapped or when you're feeling like there's no light or it's like, I've done this shadow work now for six straight months. Like I wasn't anticipating shadow work to take this long or whatever it might be. It's like, know that the, the act of self-love and patience with self over anything else first, but just be like, I see you. I see that it's hard for you. I see that it hurts right now and I'll hold space for you. I've mm -hmm. got you. Like saying that to yourself can even alleviate some of that in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Which again, going to like the center point of your existence right now, it's like st square one. Mm -hmm. is just knowing that you are there for yourself. And just even starting as simple as that to allow you to move forward. Because when you're, when you know you need to move forward, but it's like, I can't possibly, because I don't know what to do anymore. Start at square one. 
go, you know, I say to people, go scoop yourself. Like, I got you. Mm -hmm. I got you. Mm -hmm. You know? Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, ladies. Hey. Well, I think that's it for today. Yeah. Have a good weekend. <laughs> I know, love right? Light. <laughs> totally. Love and light. Love and light. Um, for all of you guys that are watching, and if this is your first time joining us, thank you so much. Please do subscribe and share with anyone that may benefit from this. And as well, um, check out avalonspirit.com. If you guys are wanting to deepen your practice, your journey, we're all on avalonspirit.com. Plus, we have more personal journey guides to help you discover you, to come back to you. So if that feels like a pull, check out avalonspirit.com and we will see you guys next week.